Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be chatting all about mental health in medical school. If you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a second year medical student in New York City at NYU Grossman School of Medicine. I feel like this is a topic that is not talked about enough i feel like super lucky i think that my class while i can really like speak for like my friend group is incredibly open um like we're literally always talking about like oh like headed to my appointment with my therapist or headed to my appointment with my psychiatrist or like oh i'm feeling depressed today or like i'm going through this episode or that episode um and so i feel like that is something that has just been so 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 important like as i've been in medical school and i'm just really grateful for it because it's made me feel more open about you know talking about mental health and stuff like that so i was like you know what let's bring it to a larger audience like let's talk about mental health in medical school on my youtube channel share it with my instagram where there's twenty thousand people and hopefully this will help you feel more comfortable um talking about mental health and just like help you give you resources all that i could just so the first thing I want to do is just like talk a little bit about like my personal journey with mental health. So I feel like my, and I've shared like a lot about this on um, Instagram, yet I didn't share for a while, but like more recently I've been a lot more open, but I pretty much struggled with depression and generalized anxiety disorder for like a while. I feel like I knew that like something wasn't right when I was in middle school probably, um, and then pretty much just like kept it all in um throughout high school and then like everything like reached a boiling point in undergrad um so I went to therapy for a few weeks in undergrad but like ultimately just didn't vibe with my therapist and I think also like I'm someone that I just need to feel safe to be able to like open up and like I would just like see my therapist like eating lunch like in the dining hall and, like that's just like I don't know, I changed like boundaries and that was just like really weird for me. And also we just didn't vibe, so I stopped going. But then I like talked to my PCP during my senior year of undergrad when I was applying to medical school. Like that was just like so much extra stress. So it was like really like messing with my anxiety. And then I'd also gotten in like car accident. So I also had like really bad driving anxiety, which was not good because I lived like three and a half hours away from home. And so ultimately like we came together and decided that Lexapro was the best option I've been on now for I think it started in like 2021 so almost like two years now um and she has been amazing it's been great once I got to medical school I got connected with our student health services and here like PCP is like or like the PCP through student health services doesn't per prescribe like medication for psychiatric illnesses um so i got connected with a psychiatrist i'm currently on my second psychiatrist here but finally feel like i have the right fit um and they've just been like helping me maintaining my lexapro I also got hooked up with therapy once again like i've kind of always known i need to go to therapy but it didn't work out in undergrad when i got here i was like making up all these excuses and then like once again things reached a boiling point and then we're like all right we need to do this so I got connected with an amazing, amazing, amazing therapist um, here at my school. And this was, I think, like November or December of last year. And it's now September. So it's, no, it's October. Wait. Yeah. So it's almost been a year and I see her every other week. I'm like, how have I gone my entire life without therapy? I just like think it's so nice. Like whenever like things are going on, it's like, nice to be able to talk about those but like even then I just think that like it's just nice to know like every two weeks there's someone that I can talk to the focus is on me and like my mental and everything that's going on um and just like having that safe space so I think that it's absolutely beautiful would highly recommend therapy for everybody um but yeah so I love it and I'm so my therapy is more like CBT so cognitive behavioral therapy so really focusing on like you know like mental constructs and coping mechanisms and reframing the way that i think and all that good stuff so it's great i have like worksheets and homework and all that good jazz i'm also like super lucky because my school like they got me connected with my psychiatrist they got me connected with my therapist and that has been awesome and then also like i have the 
supportive knowing that like I'm never going to be put like on a clerkship with like my psychiatrist like as my attending and then like being responsible for my grade like there's um kind of like mechanisms in place to prevent that and then also like you know like I'm a big hospital system and so like all my information's in my chart so also like they literally have um they call it like breaking the glass so like if you're working in within the hospital system or, like a medical student like it like has your chart like flagged and so like you have to be like special to get access to that so um I really love that like even when I went to go like see my dermatologist who is in within the NYU system but not within like student health services like he couldn't see like any of my appointment information um from student health services like and so I was able to like give him access to that but that's really nice that like doctors that are in charge of my grades like can't just be like playing around in my chart and that's like very unethical and like a HIPAA violation so I don't think anyone would do it but I think that's something that is a big fear for us like medical students we're like our grades are important we don't want to mess anything up and so like I think just having that extra security blanket of knowing that like they can't see anything um is really helpful how medical school affects your mental health I don't think that this is something that is talked about enough in high school I went to boarding school and I remember at like our the equivalent of like our revisit weekend so this was like you know we'd all been accepted and they're like talking to us like before we made our final decisions for like the boarding high school that I went to and they're like if your mental health like is not where it needs to be like you need to really like work on that and get that like up to par or like before you come here like consider not coming here um and I was like okay whatever and like it was really really hard and my mental was like not good um and I wish there was like a disclaimer for medical school really similar like hey you need to get your mental health in order or like have it like not fixed but like under control or like have a support system and mechanisms in place because like medical school is going to exacerbate like any issues that you have like physical mental emotional like everything um and I feel like some of the reasons for that is like isolation because a lot of people will move away from medical school so you're like leaving your home and your support system behind and I also think like another mechanism of isolation is like when our preclinical curriculum a lot of medical schools now they're very flexible either the classes are fully online or you can go in person but you can also watch online and then like half of us end up going online because we're like oh we can watch on 2x speed let's save time but then it was like okay now I'm not seeing anybody unless I'm very intentional about it so there's another way that you're breeding isolation and then for like a lot of us medical students that have type a personalities we love a schedule and we do things and like with the increased flexibility there's like okay by the end of your the time you have your exam which for me was for two weeks but for other schools it might be eight weeks like you need to know this material but in between like there's no quizzes or safeguards or mechanisms to make sure that you're learning this stuff so like you can just kind of like free for all and so I think that there's also just like a lot of increased flexibility which is very very nice but like for me personally it was like a weird feeling I'm used to having a strict schedule and so like not having a schedule that was consistent also was like very anxiety inducing for me and also like as you go up so like my first year I had a lot of breaks I was able to see my family like at least like every other month or like every three months um but as I'm gonna go into rotations I'm like I'm gonna this year I'm missing my first ever Thanksgiving at home and like terrified that's gonna be so hard and so like you're gonna have less time for breaks less time to see family and you just have to be like more intentional about because you also want to see your friends and things like that and so I think that's another way that like if you have depression anxiety like if that's a trigger for you or like if that's your biggest support system like being away from them personally I feel like that's like really hard for me like, there's burnout there's extra stress of trying to learn everything and so like your body's just going through a lot and so I feel like those are you know like and there's no way to like simulate medical school before you're there so it's not like I'm saying like you need to simulate this and, like be exactly prepared but I think it's like really important to kind of like figure out your figure out like what your triggers are what coping mechanisms work best for you and like figure out a plan for when you go into medical school for what is like what's the plan for when you start feeling like for me personally like anxiety is like my biggest issue so like when I start feeling anxious like what is my like immediate plan whether that's like deep breathing or listening mind like personally like listening to gospel music what about if we escalate to the next level like can I reach out to student health services do I have a psychiatrist here do I have a therapist here um and then like of course like if you you know if something happens you need to go to the hospital like what's the closest hospital who's gonna be your emergency contact? like all that stuff um so I feel like it's nice just if you can like have a plan in place before you start so that way like you're not like me and like in the middle of your first semester and you're like wait I need to go home so I can see my parents and you just have to like drop everything and then like figure it out with your school after 
mental health in general is like very stigmatized and I think more so in certain communities. I grew up in the South, you know, like let's start with that one. Also like in the medical community and you would think that, you know, we're all doctors or, you know, like going to be doctors. Like we understand how the brain works and anatomy and physiology and like we know the mechanisms of, you know, like what causes anxiety or we have an idea of the mechanisms and we know that like there's literally like something, something is not right in our brains. Like that's why I take an SSRI for my anxiety because like it's not like I just decided I wanted to be anxious or like I decided that I want to be depressed. But like there's so I feel like these fear tactics, like one of the things that I heard um, through the grapevine was like that licensing boards could like deny you your license if you had like a mental health issue. So I'm like, what? Like, so I feel like that causes some people to like decide that they don't want to seek out help because you don't want it to be in your chart that like you have anxiety or something like that. I don't know, like, that's insane. And I was actually trying to look this up so we could like debunk that myth for you guys. Um, and basically like licensing boards can still ask you about mental health, but like there's more and more like lobbying and just like work to make sure that it's not gonna like prevent you from getting your license and like not supposed to ask you like all these invasive questions and things like that but i think it's like unfortunate that this is like a part of the healthcare system and that people are literally afraid of seeking out treatment for mental health because we don't want like all the years of work that we've done to like go down the drain so that really annoys me that that's even a thing but one of the last things I want to talk about was like resources for mental health support. I compiled a list and I will um, make sure to leave those in the description as well. Definitely know like your warning signs. So like I know that when I start to sleep a lot, I'm extra tired. And when I like start saying no and isolating, like saying no to my friends and isolating myself, like I'm about to like go down. And so I'm um, just kind of like being aware of that. And then I'm like, okay, let me schedule an appointment with my therapist. So like even now, like because I have like really really supportive friends I'm just like hey like I'm really struggling right now can you like make sure that I'm like coming to things or you know just like check in on me a little bit more that kind of thing I think that we all know about or should know about National Suicide Prevention Hotline um their number is now 988 so really easy to like remember um and then there's the crisis text line text home to 741 741 and then this is also something that I didn't know about until my school shared it with me the physician support line so this is only for physicians and medical students and you're like wait I'm not a physician yet but yes medical students are included check the website and like you know did all that for you guys but basically it's like a group of volunteer psychiatrists across the country um that you can literally you don't even have to like be in crisis you can just like call them whenever and it's like fully confidential and it's amazing so that number is one 409 0141 again that's the physician support line um so i think that is amazing how do you know if a school is supportive because i get this question all the time like i am just like wow i feel like i picked like the most amazing school like i feel like i'm actually very supportive and i don't feel like it's an issue if I'm struggling with my mental health I don't feel like it's going to be like detrimental to my medical school journey um and I don't think every school is like that from what I've heard from other people so like I think that there are some things that you can ask on interview days or you know like after you've been accepted chatting with um current students at the school so like I would definitely ask what their absence policy is so do they have like just days that you could take off like mental health days where you can literally just say like hey I need a mental health day and like will that be an excused absence for you or like is that something that's gonna go on you know like on your record and maybe your MSPE letter for residency and things like that um then therapy and psychiatry do they offer free therapy for students where are they getting these therapists from do they offer maybe one on not just one-on-one -on -one, but also group our school also has group therapy options um and then also like psychiatry and are these in cover covered by the student insurance plan, outside insurance if you have that, or is it just totally free? Mine's free, so that's beautiful. What is their leave of absence policy? Take a leave of absence like three months into your first year, like you might have to start all over because like there's only usually one preclinical curriculum going at one time. Um, but then like maybe if you're in clerkship year or later after that, like it's a little bit more flexible because you can kind of just like jump in and out depending on how the schedule works at your school. Um, but I would just say like, 
am I able to take a leave of absence if I need it? How long would that be? What resources are going to be provided? Like, can I, whatever, can I still get access to things and all that good jazz? Like, maybe leave of absence for like a research year. Can they provide funding if you need to do that? Just like for something a little bit lighter. So those are good questions to ask. Um, also, does your school host wellness events? So my school has like a wellness committee supported by our Office of Student Affairs, like run by medical students. And so we have breakfast booths where they'll like have breakfast um, in the main building for all of us. So they'll also host like meditation sessions and we'll get like 10 minute back massages every few months. Like, and they'll set the, all, all that up in the main campus. So I love that. So just like see like, how do they support your wellness? The last thing I think that like you should ask directly to the school that you're interested in and I'm trying to figure out like the best way to phrase this. So I wouldn't say necessarily like on interview day because there are always so many different people interviewing. Like at some of my schools, it was literally alumni interviewing us or it might be like some random faculty member that teaches like one class. When I mean like one class, I mean like one nine to nine fifty class, like one day. Um, but like this is a really good question to like ask students, like if they've ever been in that, not directly if they've ever been in that situation, but like have you heard like if the school offers resources if you're in a mental health crisis, or to someone that's like Office of Student Affairs or the admissions office or someone that like would know this information, not just like a rando, and like directly ask them, do you have resources for students experiencing a mental health crisis? If they don't, that's like really giving red flag. So um, those are the questions that I really think that you should ask. And of course, I feel like there are certain answers that you should expect for all of them. Um, and I also think it is important to ask regardless of if you've been diagnosed with a mental health condition in the past or like you you might think like you're good but you never know like what can happen once you get in medical school so i think regardless it's good to go to a school that's going to support you and be there for you i'm so glad that i was finally able to make this video i really just wanted to chat about something that i feel like is so 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 important in all of the world but something that's not necessarily talked about enough so make sure that you check out all those resources that i'm going to drop in the description if you have any other resources please 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 share them and then also like if your medical school do does something that you think is really nice that i haven't mentioned make sure to drop that in the comments um because i think it's always great for other pre-med students and also medical students to see like what their school could be offering or to see what their school should be offering all right guys i will check in with you guys next time take care